I'm going to try to persuade you that coat sequences do not exist, that they are a figment of the mathematical imagination or lack of imagination. So here's a snapshot of a few sequences early on in the number line. It includes 27, which is obviously far too long to fit in this table, and that applies to a lot of them. Now, this is the conventional even odd sequences. I am going to remove the even numbers because we don't need them. So let's move on to that version of the table. Now we do see the end of a few sequences, such as 43. And what we are going to do now is actually just isolate the first two columns. And I'm going to say we don't need the rest of these sequences. All we need is the first column and the second column. So there they are, the first and the second columns. And now we'll just put them in a separate table. And it's an input-output table. And on the first column, we have all the odd numbers sequentially. So now we don't have to think about the lateral sequences. Uh, and we don't have to think about each se sequence on its own. Uh, we are thinking about the output of each odd number and why it's increasing or decreasing. So that's what we're going to do next. And we see there are just three operations acting on the odd numbers, uh, by which I'm calling A, B, and C, and A is n plus 1 times 1.5 minus 1. And uh, how I know which numbers have which operations is really quite simple. It's to do with the congruence of the number. Is it um, is uh, n plus 1 evenly divisible by 4 is m minus 1 evenly divisible by four, uh, by 8 and if neither of those is the case is n minus 1 evenly divisible by 4 and uh, so yeah from that you get the operation so I gave you the first operation which turns 15 into 29 and uh, let's just speak through that. So that's 15 plus 1 is 16 times 1.5 is 24 minus 1 is 23. And the second operation B is m minus 1 times 0.75 plus 1. So that's, let's talk through it, 17 becomes 16 becomes 12 becomes 13. And the third operation is simply m minus 1 times 0.25. And that's simply, let's give an example, 21, 20 divided by 4 equals 5. So we can see that the frequency of these three oper operations are different. Uh, so A is uh, every other odd number. And B and C are every fourth odd number. So the ratio is 2 to 1 to 1. And this, um, this uh, distribution continues all the way down the number line without exception. It's just pure arithmetic, so every fourth number, the um, the pattern repeats itself. I think you can see that. So 35 uh, output is the beginning of the next um, four outputs.
Well, now, I, what I've done, and I can't go backwards, but what I've done is I've broken out uh, those congruences, uh, those operations by columns. So I've, I've separated the numbers. And it's a very orderly, orderly thing. So the A column is every fourth number, which corresponds with the congruence of um, 0 mod 4. And B is every eighth number, odd number. So that corresponds with a congruence of 0 mod 8. And then the C column is really can be considered a catch all column or else column or an otherwise column and so effectively it's um, a, a congruent zero mod two and um, you might notice that in the output side in the third column we have every odd number uh, which is very interesting and uh, what that suggests to me is that every obviously that every odd number can be an output of a sequence and therefore an input of a sequence and if that's true basically that ends the infinity question right there because it means every convergent sequence includes every odd number which means there are no odd numbers left for divergent sequences, as far as I can see. I want to just see, yeah, so let's move on. Here I've uh, arranged the uh, output numbers by their congruence, and it's a little bit different, but this is um, also has a precision to it. It repeats every 16 units. This repeats every 16 units. Um, so I can't easily count down without getting confused here, but uh, it does repeat twice in this um, in this table. So, so here I'm just showing I'm mapping a sequence uh, onto the table. And I don't want you to think very much about this except that the congruences are changing. But uh, so remember, uh, if you look at this right, the right way, and I'm seeing, yeah, every, um, every sequence, is, it just breaks down into, I'm on my boat and it's rocking at the moment. <laughs> That's why I keep looking away from the um, screen. But uh, so each of these is an atomic operation, 27 to 41, and 41 to 31, and 31 to 47, and 47 to 71. They're all atomic operations. Why think about it as an elongated sequence? I don't necessarily see the point, and we don't need the sequence. So yeah, to sum up, top, we have a sequence and it looks unpredictable and weird and zigzaggy lots of peaks and valleys wow it's not about this what it's about is on the bottom graph a bar chart with linear growth for the odd numbers which are blue and linear growth for the numbers that increase by 1.5 and linear growth for the numbers that increase by 0.75 and linear growth for the numbers that increase by 0.25. That is essentially the story of why sequences are misleading and potentially irrelevant. Bye-bye sequences and bye-bye to my audience. Thank you.